Hey guys, up for teardown today we have a cryo engine assembly made by CTI Cryogenics. I wasn't sure exactly what this was initially, uh, but my, in my last video people had commented and suggested this was part out of uh, Sterling Cycle Cryo Cooler. And that does uh, indeed seem to be what it is. I couldn't find anything based on the manufacturer's uh, labels. Uh, this thing is extremely heavy, it's about maybe two or three kilograms has this part on it that looks like a piston or of some sort, like a compressor. When you connect power to it, it sounds like it's spinning. So it definitely seems like it's like a compressor. I have found uh, documentation on other uh, cryo coolers. It's in, this does seem to be that because it has this tube connecting out. I believe it's called a split cycle cryo cooler. And this connection here is probably for the helium gas fill. Inside this tube, you look really closely, get that to focus, it's a, actually a coaxial tube, there's two tubes in there, and it seems like the center one is actually cause has gas flow when you turn it on. So if we connect power up to this, start, start out, you can hear it spinning a little bit, let me get the mic a bit closer. That's zero volts, and if we go up, it's about three volts there. Now you can hear a little bit of gas coming out. It's spinning pretty slowly. Uh, it is vibrating. I don't know if you'll see that, but it is vibrating a bit. That's not my hand shaking. I'm not sure what voltage this run at, uh, runs at. I'm guessing something on the order of 12, or maybe if it's an aircraft system, 28 volts. So you go up now, it's about, that's about 8 volts. Now, yeah, now you can hear it quite a bit more. I can feel the airflow all the way out to here. Let's go to 12. There's 12 volts. Now you can feel it quite a bit better out here. It's also shaking a lot more now. And if you notice that sound, most of the sound is being conducted through the table. So it sounds like there's some sort of like a clicking going on in this thing. Yeah, if this is a Sterling cryo cooler, this isn't, uh, it isn't a pump. This basically pushes gas in and out of this. And this is a, it has a missing part that is a, the actual cold end. This is basically the hot end, I believe, where the, the heat gets uh, dissipated in. This is probably mounted to a surface to dissipate the heat. I mean, unfortunately, we didn't get that cold end. That would have been really cool. We actually might have a working system. Well, we would have had to fill it with fill it with helium, which is likely the normal working fluid. So let's just turn up this voltage a little bit, see if it. Yeah, I have no idea how fast that should be going. That's about 18 volts. Yeah, let's give this. Uh, let's open this up and see what's in there. I'm hoping to see a piston or something interesting. Looks like someone may have already been in this before because most of the screws are missing. So let's see what we actually find here. These are not particularly tight. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks like a piston in there. This just has some sort of yeah, there's some sort of damage there. It looks like. That doesn't look right, unless it's some sort of just a gummed up gasket material. Yeah, we can't really see, oh yeah, there we go, that moves. Let's see if we can connect power to this. Actually see this moving. There we go. That actually doesn't move very much at all. It's about 12 volts there. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear the sound change. 
get the mic in closer there. Load it down. Sounds like something rubbing. You can also hear the thing sort of bashing back and forth. Goes away when you push on it. Yeah, I'm thinking this might be worn out. This stuff does appear to be some sort of a gasket material, it just flakes right off. Doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, damage. I'm curious as to how they join this coaxial tube with this fitting. So let's see if we can figure that out. Hmm. It's a coaxial tube, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. Interesting. Why would they do that? I wonder if that's just to to restrict the flow rate or something. Yeah. Or it's broken off in here. Yeah, I don't understand that. Let's see if we can go in further. Oh, that's really oh, that's really tight. Yep, definitely not actually a coaxial connection in there. It's just yeah, I don't know why they use the coaxial tubing. And let's see what's in here, which I believe is the uh, port used to fill the system with helium. Okay, we're gonna have to get a light. Let's grab a light and see if we can see what's in there. No, I can't really... can't really see. You can just see a bit of the motor or something there. Yeah, we're going to have to open this up. It looks like the end of this is screwed on because there's these holes here that look like they're for putting a tool in to screw this. And then it's been welded. I wonder if that's TIG welding or something more advanced like a laser beam or electron beam welding. Anyway, I'm just going to chuck this up in the lathe, put a uh, center hole here, and then we can just turn this... La uh, thing off, turn the weld off cleanly. Oops, that loosened the chuck. There we go. And here is the inside of the pump. This is really beautifully constructed. Uh, this part was stuck in the lid when I uh, took it apart. Yeah, it's just a, a s female spline with a pretty nice uh, bearing in it. Some sort of white, uh, white lubricant. And there's just a needle bearing uh, in this. One thing I don't notice here is any sort of a counterweight, which explains why it was so uh, so shaky. It looks like... how deep is this? It's about... yeah, about half of this, this back half is the motor. So it looks like we're going to have to remove this ring in here, make up a tool to remove that ring. Let's see what part actually turns, so... This whole part turns, interesting. I wonder if this is some sort of a counterbalance. And the back part is quite thick, as you expect. This is really high quality. It's a nice steel insert there for the bearing. You can see uh, some sort of... get the light here. You can see there's a, some black marks there. I guess the bearing was rubbing somewhat. And another interesting thing, it's going to be a little hard to see this, but the profile of those threads is actually sort of a sawtooth profile. It's not a typical sort of triangular thread profile. I'm curious as to why they decided to cut the threads this way. Yeah, if anyone knows what the benefit of this type of thread is, please let me know. This piston 
uh, the piston sleeve here, this is definitely a ceramic. This is not plastic. Interesting. I guess it must be some sort of a permanently lubricated. Or, yeah, it feels now there's some sort of a, must have applied lubricant. There's sort of a viscous feel to this as you move it. Interesting why they chose a, a ceramic piston lining compared to uh, just a regular steel or cast iron or even aluminum lining. It seemed to have gotten that nut free. Initially I just came in with hammers like this and now I should be able to just get in two, two of these and just start turning it. Get this off another way. There we go. Should now come out. There we go. Ooh, nice sort of sealed unit there. Interesting. Oh yeah, those look like uh, brush uh, uh, brush covers. So, how do we get this thing the rest of the way apart? I'm guessing all these screws have to come out. Okay, it took me a while to figure out how to get this motor apart. Turns out there's this large flywheel thing on the back that has to be pressed up. That comes off. Really nice. Look at the size of that commutator on that. Huh. And yeah, a lot of poles on this. Interesting brush setup with the the two the sort of they're not normally the if you have four brushes they're at 90 degrees. This one's not for some reason. Interesting. Still not quite sure. This front piece must be pressed on as well because this central sort of mounting bell has to come off the front. Did a, little, did a number on the commutator there. Well, not too bad. Seems that the brush is like that brush there is not even making contact. Yeah, I wonder if that was from all the bashing around. So, yeah, it's odd they have. Uh, oh, yeah, this bearing has some sort of weird fibrous seal only on this side. Yeah, this was the side that was at the sealed in the end bell. This was the sort of more open one. I guess they're doing that so the carbon dust doesn't get into it. I'm curious why they have this super heavy flywheel on the thing. It doesn't seem that this needs really would need much of a flywheel. This thing must be pretty old because all the modern ones I can find, even the one from that paper I'd mentioned earlier, from the 80s all mention brushless motors. This must be reasonably old to, uh, to use a brush motor like this. Uh, yeah, so that one, that one works. Yeah, these brushes are <laughs> pretty much completely spent. Oh, interesting, they're just using uh, flat magnets. Huh. I didn't want to bother with uh, proper magnets, I guess. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah, an odd motor. Beautifully machined. I guess this thing was obviously not cheap. Some sort of military thing. Oh, we have a part number. SQT2120A. No voltages, though. Yeah, I'm still curious as to what voltage this should run at. Oh, look at the attention to detail there. They've drilled and put uh, pins in just to hold the wires. Yeah, this was not cheap. Judging by how that ring came off, yes, this was definitely press fit on there. So, let's see if we can pull the rotor out. Okay, ooh, those magnets are really strong. Yep. Oh, that's a really nice rotor. Interesting how they've wound it in sort of four groups. Must be something to do with that weird um, angle or phase angle between the brushes. It's a really nice pancake motor. Too bad we can't really use this for anything. We can't really really run it outside the pump because the bearing supports are on either side of the pump housing. We can't really do anything with it. Nice. Uh, Really nice paperweight though. 
And there's the inside of the magnets. Yeah, these are, yeah, those are neodymium magnets. Those are, no way there's anything else how, how powerful they are. Interesting, they put these plugs in. I'm guessing there was an option to have the motor sort of connected to the pump volume. This one, they plug these up and you can see some glue in that bottom one. Actually, looking at this further, I now don't think this was uh, press fit on from the front like this. I think the whole motor shaft is one solid piece. There's a, uh, you can see a collar here. So they basically just started, they press this on, then this spacer ring here, then everything else. So yeah, there's no way to disassemble this motor without, uh, pretty much without destroying it. You can see quite a bit of brush dust, or what I think is brush dust at the back of this housing. I don't think that's from anything I did while taking it apart. I never really generated any black fragments, but you can see why they would seal off the motor from the rest of from the rest of this. And the last thing of note on this is the little uh, feed through to feed power in. I'm probably going to keep this for use in other projects. Anything that involves feeding signal through a pressure or vacuum. Not exactly sure how well this would hold up to hold high vacuum, but uh, that looks pretty interesting. Well, that was an interesting teardown. It's interesting seeing a pump like this. It sort of reminds me of a refrigeration compressor, but so, so much higher construction quality. It also seems like it's not really built to last as long, especially with the brush motor, completely sealed and unserviceable brush motor. Anyway, hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.